that we don't know shit, then we weren't paying attention. <laughs> Bingo. Yeah. We must have grabbed something. Uh, I happen to know uh, all three of our stories, and we are miracles. Part of this is to share some experience, strength, and hope for folks that are ready to let go of the misery. One reason I've studied this for 30 years, it is extremely interesting shit. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's the son of a Texas Ranger. I mean, sharp, good, great family, all these, and launches into shooting up heroin. And then bursts. There's no clinical intervention that could possibly have helped transform you. Some spiritual thing happened and look at and look at it. I mean, it's miraculous. If we don't get the resentments out, we've got to grow long hair when you have a Texas Ranger dad, right? To say F you. Yeah, there may be a resentment there. Yeah. <laughs> we hide our resentments in our hair. That's right. There you go. Hi there, and welcome to The Recovery Crew. I'm Dr. Bob Bear, and this is uh, Deep Waters Recovery. Uh, our, we have uh, invited Kyle Rainwater back uh, to have a good discussion about step four. Uh, step four is the one where we uh, take, take a, after we've gained some support and let go of all of our resistance, then we start diving in to the real work and gain awareness and maybe let go of some chunks of victim. Yeah, that have been in our way of living with freedom. So we're going to have that lively discussion today. It's not just for people that are uh, that have crashed and burned around substance use. It's for it's really a dialogue about uh, living with freedom. Uh, so you'll I think you'll enjoy this discussion today. Camille Reed is our uh, co-host. She's also the coordinator for Deep Waters. So it's going to be a lively uh, a lively little chat. So. Glad you're here. Uh, Deep Waters Recovery is a training, uh, several different workshops with, that we offer for facilitators to learn this particular style of dynamic trauma resolution work, but it's uh, in a certification program. Uh, also, uh, we offer the Deep Waters Intensive, which is a three day uh, intensive, nurturing, loving, transformational weekend at a really nice retreat uh, for folks that are ready to do the work. So reach out to us, like, share all that, uh, all the stuff that keeps this thing vibrant on social media. Uh, also subscribe to the YouTube channel that helps us out a lot. All right, glad you're here. You're in the deep waters now. All right, so there is Kyle and Camille. We are back after uh, several years. We're. Uh, we, we're wearing the same clothes that we were in that last episode, but uh, it's actually it's just a few minutes later. But uh, <laughs> the, the folks that are <laughs> folks that are listening, it's going to be a week or two later. But uh, uh, anyway, Kyle, thanks for coming back. Kyle Rainwater and uh, Camille Reed is our uh, co-host and the uh, and our. Uh, uh, the manager of programs here at Deep Waters. Kyle is the uh, business development representative at the Last Resort Treatment Center, a superstar treatment center that, uh, you know, that's where I send uh, most of the men that I refer to treatment because I know they're going to get the real deal. And uh, so welcome to you both. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Thank, thank you for having me. Uh, Camille, why don't you say something about... Uh, uh, to, oh, today I want to let everyone know we're going to be, we're, we're, this is part of a series. This is the fourth step. The fourth step is um, is, uh, the, is the awareness step, <laughs> awareness of self step. Uh, may, uh, it's uh, literally made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. So that's going to be our topic today. Uh, so before we launch, Camille, why don't you say a couple of things about what's happening here at Deep Waters Recovery. Yes, here at Deep Waters Recovery, we are gearing up to do our next facilitators training, which is going to be June 4th and 5th. Um, Deep Waters Recovery is an advanced recovery and healing experience for men and women. We've got the DWI or Deep Waters Intensive that'll be later this summer of 2021. It's a three day transformational trauma resolution experience that uses psychodrama, bioenergetics, and rituals of empowerment. Um, you can also reach out to us 
at admin at deepwatersrecovery.com, A-D-M-I-N. Um, if you would like to bring the sustainable trauma resolution into the curriculum of your treatment facility, um, we also have an outpatient program where you can work with Dr. Bob and some of his colleagues in groups, individual couples and family sessions. Um, I gave you guys the email address already. And then our podcasts come out on Fridays. The blog posts are on Mondays. Um, we've got Facebook, Instagram, follow us on YouTube, like, share, Twitter, all of it. Um, and then you can also follow Bob on TikTok as the recovery and trauma guy. Yep. She always does that smile. When she <laughs> says that meaning, I can't believe she figured that shit out. I don't know exactly what it means, but it's some kind of, some kind of, uh, uh, there's some story there. I'll get it from you later. How could he, how could he possibly, uh, be that old and be on TikTok. I think that's what it is. All right. So we are going to talk about the fourth step today. Just so we know who's here, Kyle Rainwater's the business development guy out at the last resort. Um, he's asked, actually, there's more to that. His particular role is connecting uh, a, a lot of different treatment folks and professionals and therapists. And he's, he's really, he's a connector dude. And uh, we, we got to listen to his story last week. Uh, uh, it, it didn't. It was sort of hard won to become to become this guy that's uh, uh, that uh, kind of came from some dark past and exploded into the world with a, just a really humble, beautiful heart. Uh, he's also a peer recovery specialist, as is Camille, and uh, a certified interventionist. So we've got the experts on here. Although the three of us know that there you get an expert on the 12 steps and uh, there's something haywire about that. We're so, aren't we supposed to be humble and not really know and be open to, so but with that as a backdrop, let's know some things today, but let's also uh, stay open to the fact that we don't know shit, right? I mean, if we didn't learn that we don't know shit, then we weren't paying attention. Bingo. Yeah. <laughs> but uh uh, but it's okay to know some things too. Well, we're sober. That's one thing. We must have grabbed something uh, because uh, all three of us, I happen to know uh, all three of our stories and we are miracles. We are miracles. And uh, so it's part of this is to share some experience, strength and hope for folks that are ready to let go of the misery. <clears throat> right? So uh, let's see. Do we do all the intro stuff? I think so. I think we can launch. Uh, so uh, just as a, a, as a backdrop, uh, step. So even in my early days in, in, uh, sobriety, I, I would, whenever there was a newcomer in the room and I always do a first step, uh, meeting, right. Which is, you know, it makes sense. It's the first step. However, <laughs> I learned from an old timer that there is so much more before the first step in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. There's an understand, and the basis of that is to begin to understand how the disease works. Because it is, you know, in the book it says cunning, baffling, and power. It is, ex that's one reason I've studied this for 30 years. It is extremely interesting shit. I mean, look at this kid. You're a kid to me, Kyle. Sorry. Everybody's a kid to okay. me. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> Look at this guy. He's the son of a uh, Texas Ranger. I mean, sharp, good, great family. All these, and launches into shooting up heroin. How? I mean, Whoa. and then and then bursts, and then you know, with uh, there's no clinical intervention that could possibly have helped transform you, uh, but some spiritual thing happened. And look at and look at it. I mean, it's miraculous the way it works. Uh, so. Uh, it's it's in that concept context that the understanding of the disease is important, even as a pre preface to working the steps. This is part of a series of working the steps, right? That and, and if anybody's listening to this, the the way that you work the steps, because we say that in the program all the time, work the step work. What do they mean? Work the. What it means is get a sponsor and do what you're told. <laughs> it's that's the short version, right? It, it doesn't mean listen to Bob's podcast and call it good. <laughs> Although it, we're hopeful that we're being a little bit helpful. Uh, all, right. all right. So there's preface to step one, but then step one is we admitted we were powerless and that our lives have become unmanageable. Very important because it's looking at the mess that we made 
which as addicts, we can't see it. We're blind to it. What mess? You know, I'm living in my car for a month. What? It's all right. I didn't die. <laughs> right? So we got we to gotta look at the mess. And we've also got to look at the fact that we can't stop doing it. That's the powerlessness. That's step one. The second piece is maybe there's a God. Maybe there's an entity. Maybe there's hope for me. Just the tiniest bit of hope in that second step, right? Even though most of us have railed against anything that sounds spiritual. <laughs> We're very good at that. Maybe we can let one drop in. And then the third step is uh, that we make a decision to just kind of do what we're told. That's one way to say it. Not, the actual step is we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understand God. As we understand God is very pivotal, very important. Most other, anything that's spiritual, they're going to try to cram some version of God down your throat. That's the, one, that's the only reason I've stuck around for 30 years. Nobody has ever tried to cram their version. Uh, so, and it's important that we have some sense of uh, the sacred doorknob or the sacred can or <laughs> the people in the group. Your God can be anything, right? Uh, we've learned that. We've all uh, learned that it can be, it's whatever it is for you, but we better have something as we go into the fourth step. And I'm about to shut up here and, and launch and let, let, let us have a conversation. But I wanted to give a little concept about how we get to this fourth step because it's, it's, it's brilliant the way the steps are laid out in order because you better have some kind of spiritual support that, it, that is real when we start digging into this stuff in the fourth step. Or we could implode. I don't know if we mm -hmm. could implode, but we might run away. That's for sure. <clears throat> um, so the fourth step is uh, we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves, right? And it's very specific. Uh, there's a specific way to do that that I'm hoping. I'm, uh, it's an opportunity to look at ourselves from a different angle. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's, it's, a, it's a topic that the, the, the resentment is a really important part of this topic. Selfishness, self-centeredness, all these things that we developed well, before we were using out of trauma, but then we enhanced it. We poured fertilizer on all those character defects with our with our acting out, right? So that's that's just a little context. There's uh, the hopefully we can you know uh, unpack uh, what is the what is the fourth step? Uh, wh how do you do it? And just philosophically, what it's about. So I'm, I'm going to open it up to Camille or Kyle. Anybody that wants to get us get us rolling here. Yeah, Kyle, I'll let you take it away with it because I want to kind of hear your take on it and then just feed in with it on the just the moral inventory side. Sure. So I will also do a bit of a preface, which I think Bob's preface was spot on. We, we, we've got to understand, you know, what we're plagued with and why we're embarking on this step working journey. Um, the first assignment I was given was out of the doctor's opinion, just due to that. And, and that was, that was what my sponsor wanted me to understand as well. Um, prior to any type of formal inventory, I was given like this 300 question packet that asked me all of these questions, things I had never thought about, about childhood, adolescent years, adulthood, all of these things basically tapping into my moral compass and, or what I think it is. Um, and so for me, it was, you know, and, it, and it, it's probably better explained in, in the 12 and 12, which is another piece of literature that's util, uh, utilized in AA, kind of breaks down the steps a little more, but it's basically that our, that our natural instincts had, had kind of run riot you know and so this this instinct for safety and love and uh community and fellowship and all these these instincts and things that needed to be filled inside of me were misguided and so the inventory is basically a nutshell version of of experiences and events of you know that misguided journey and and you know, what transpired along the way. Um, 
And so it, it, you know, traditionally it's, it's broken down into four sections, the, the fears, resentments, um, sexual inventory, and then a harms list. Um, I didn't do a formal harms list. It was pretty apparent who I had harmed after the, the first three lists were, were written out. And so, you know, it, it just kind of worked itself out that way. Um, but, but the two big ones I, that, that Bob alluded to were, were the fears and the resentments and kind of breaking those down and how those had driven my behavior and way of thinking for the past however many years. Mm -hmm. Yep. The long hair was a, was a, if we don't get the resentments out, we've got to grow long hair when you have a Texas Ranger dad, right? To save F you. That, that's an early, early sign of, yeah, there may be a resentment there. Yeah. <laughs> we hide our resentments in our hair. That's right. There you go. And now look, no resentment. I'm, lo I'm losing my ability. <laughs> Another promise of this process. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I mean, it, it, it sat down and, and, and broke it down. I, I think another important preface to this step, and, and there, there's, a, there's a spiritual principle behind each step that should be acquired as a result of fully working said step. And so the, the spiritual principle behind step four is courage. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, I should, I should, I should be embarking on this uncomfortable journey with courage and and just courageously facing these things and by the time i've i've put all of these things on paper thoroughly and honestly i should have at least somewhat acquired courage at least as it pertains to you know my disease and how it's affected me and others along the way yeah yeah, that's a great way to put it. Um, I know for me, there was a lot of fear in just starting my fourth step. So then I had to like put that in there because I was like a mastermind of doing hidden things and nobody ever knowing about them. Like I was, you know, people saw maybe like 5% of how bad my addiction actually was on the outside because I was like very good at hiding it. But then only I knew how bad it actually was and all of the things that I got away with that were so harmful to people that I was like, holy cow, if they knew like what I had actually done, like this would have, you know, gotten so much worse like a while, a while back. So I know for me, one of the <clears throat> most important things, anytime I write a fourth step, but for sure the first time I had done it, just kind of like breaking through that glass of being comfortable with writing things out and for me, it's always like a reliving it experience. And so like some of the best advice that was given to me that I always want to pass down to is just, you know, like praying in and out of it. And almost every single resentment and fear that I wrote, I kind of had to like sit back and say like a mini prayer with it saying like, I'm reliving this right now, but I'm not doing it right now. Like I'm going to be like fearless and thorough in what I'm writing, but once I'm done writing it, I'm going to see it for what it is, take what I need to take out of it, and then detach from it so that I'm not carrying around all of that shame with me, like reliving the shame and like letting it pile back onto me. And I think that's where like a lot of the courage comes from, because we don't have that courage that we're, we're going to, you know, just put it on like another coat and just like be so bogged down by it. Like I remember the first time I was writing it, my whole, I mean, I was just messed up for like two, two weeks. Like whenever I was in treatment, trying to get through this fourth step, like I was a monster and I felt like my vision was cloudy. Like I couldn't sure. see anything for what it is. Cause I was reliving it. So that courage piece is, it builds up like a nice resilience, I guess, like to the process. Yeah, no, well said. I mean, I think another piece of, I guess, advice or, or just a perspective that my sponsor shared with me, as he said, Kyle, a, a resentment doesn't have to make sense. Mm -hmm. And so there were a lot of things as I, as I embarked on this healing journey that I felt like I had already started coming to terms with, right? And, and 
as I started to feel better and as I let myself off the hook, I was letting others off the hook. And so one of, he, he shared that with me, a resentment doesn't have to make sense. And, and the main resentment that I had that that pertained to was my mom passing away. Mm-hmm. And prior to this phase, you know, and, and we spoke about it last week in, in, in my story and all of that was, um, you know, she passed away when I was 15 from cancer. And I did not realize that I can conceptually understand there was nothing that could be done. Everything that could be done was done. She still left me. Yep. And I had to realize that there was, there was a certain degree of resentment behind her leaving me. Yep. And I think for me, that I, I would say of all the things on my fourth step, that was a pivotal realization that I, that I had the awareness and could address the fact that I resented that. Yep. And there's a, there's a beauty in that uh, because what it does is once you get in there, it turns the ball from the resentment was the flag that was, but, but it turns the ball to my, my, my anger toward my dad, my resentment. When, once I get in there and do the work, it turns the ball toward my grief which is really what is driving the, the anger. <laughs> it's a, it, anger. Anger is a secondary emotion that is like a drug. <clears throat> it keeps the actual feeling at bay. It's a, uh, sure. All right, all right. so um, just to, back to co- what Camille was saying about, I thought it was so bad, all the stuff that I did. I, I, it's a, one of the excuses I used not to do. I mean, this is where one of the places in the steps where people get stuck and never move forward. <laughs> Is do, doing the written, I'm not going to launch into how to do a fourth step. I really want people to get a good sponsor. It's been around a long time. They'll give you a very specific, it's not rocket science, but it's hard. It, you will have feelings during this. So we're, we're not going to launch into how to exactly do it. Uh, and, and lots of people do it different ways. But it, uh, 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 but the, the thing is, just as a little preview or as a spoiler, your sponsor will, or whoever you do your fifth step with, which is unpacking of all this, right, will probably say, yeah, eh, I did some of that shit. My shit was worse. Okay, what's next? Yeah. Right. Really, I ha- in every every fourth step I've ever done, it's like, okay, I'm waiting for the, you know, for the, for the priest to come or for the, for the heavens to come in. But actually, I'm not that important. The, 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 <laughs> the world probably wasn't paying attention to half of the shit that I did. So. Uh, it's really one of the ways that we blow ourselves that we're so important that our stuff is so bad we can't share it and it keeps us stuck. So that was one topic I wanted to put out there. Um, also, you know, I'm a young guy. Uh, I just see Carl Jung in every corner of the program. And it, it, uh, I, I am most entertained by the spot it you've got it concept right if i see it in somebody else and i want to fucking grab you, <laughs> that son of a bitch i've got a resentment for the yeah. it's a door it choked me up <laughs> i've got to do some work here somebody facilitate me um uh that's the doorway to seeing myself yeah it's shadow in in carl jung's work it's called the shadow the part of us that's hidden repressed and denied that we see in people, places, and things. And that's the magic of the fourth step. We, the, the, what's my part? <laughs> that is the punchline of the fourth step. What's my part in it? Uh, our, our, our buddy, uh, uh, Stephen Long, who's one of my go-to guys, he's a, a, a student of Mark Houston's stuff. Uh, anybody that's listening, want to look up some Mark Houston, uh, uh, he, uh, uh, YouTube videos on the steps. I recommend it. Uh, that's old school. He's a little rough edged, but everybody breathe. It'll be okay. <laughs> um, but he says this, here's the concepts of the fourth step. This is a different angle at looking at ourselves. This whole fourth step stuff is brand new. If you haven't done it before, you've never done anything like this. I'll guarantee it. There's nobody on the planet doing this, right? It is looking at ourselves through a different, from a different angle. And it is an awareness step. 
it, it's not an action step, really. We don't do much except write down and get some awareness and knock the denial, uh, lay, knock an inch or two of denial off the top of this. Well, maybe that is me. Maybe I do have a part in this. This is not a thing that's normally said in the world. Everybody's got their sword out pointing this way, mostly. Occasionally plunging it, and I'm a rotten person. But most of the time, it's you did it to me. Uh, and then the, the real punchline here is, we, if we do a good fourth step, the victim thing is over. They did it to me. My problem is out here. That, that's where, this, where we shift, because as addicts, that's what, how we mostly roll, right? It's like, they're doing it to me, they're doing it to me. Let me take it, they're doing it to me, they're doing it. Let me, <laughs> that's what we do. Sure. And, and so this whole step is where we turn that thing to, wait a minute, no, I got a part in this. And it makes sense, and it's practical, because this is the only thing I have much influence over. Even if that rotten bastard had 97% of the, the blame, that's the 97 I don't have much influence over. So it's a practical step too. Anybody? Sure. All right, I'm going to shut up now. Anybody want to say anything? Well, and I, I think too, one of, the, one of the important things that I realized through, uh, I guess, four and five, not trying to group them together too much, but through, this, through these two steps right here, is there were a lot of good things, good qualities, good characteristics. You know, uh, the, the, the literature uses the term shortcomings. And, and it's, it's, I'm just using my tools wrong. You know, in a lot of my scenarios, it, you know, the intent may have not been malicious yeah. per se, because I was just trying to fill this need that I had, this instinctual need. But if we can, if we can, you know, tweak the way we're using the tool, it could probably be be used for good. And 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 I think that that was a piece for me, somewhat through this step as I'm writing it on paper and and viewing my life from this out of body experience, right? Looking at my story on paper from, from a different vantage point of like, I'm not this awful, terrible, just evil person. You know, I have some things to offer the world. I just need to kind of tweak the trajectory yeah. a little bit. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, I think this uh, po pointing at the fourth step, uh, it, it, I think it's a good philosophical. That's one of the things, Kyle, that we like to do uh, on this program is to get it out of this little esoteric world where those of us that did this wacko drugs and alcohol uh, self-abuse. <laughs> we did not abuse alcohol, by the way. We abused ourselves with alcohol. That's a misnomer. Mm. Don't get me started. Um, but, <laughs> but, but we try to get it. I think the 12 steps are a pretty good philosophy for living a good life, for getting some freedom, uh, for, 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 uh, uh, turning the attention back here, which is, you know, we get one life right in this lifetime. We get, I, I think maybe there's more, maybe Camille, she's kind of a mystic. Maybe, maybe we'll transition to another I don't know, but I know I've got this one, right? And I want to live it. Um, and when I'm focused on that shit out there, I am not in my body. I am on, I'm out there. And this, this step is the one where it turns the attention and we have to practice it, right? That's why when, when we say taking inventory, that's one of our cliche or one of our uh, esoteric or what's the right word, the uh, jargon, the jargon that we use that means, wait a minute. I got a part in this. <laughs> I don't want to look at it, but uh, Kyle, help me look at this. In fact, sometimes we have to call somebody to help us see it. It is sure. that's another am amazing part of addiction. How denial works. It keeps us from seeing reality, and when we need support, that's why we're a community-based uh, outfit. Uh, Deep Waters is committed to that. We know 
that that's where the transformation happens, that connection, that look in the other guy's eye. And then I relax a little bit and say, yeah, me too, brother. <laughs> yeah, I think, I know for me, like just having, sometimes I just needed someone to sit at the same table with me while I was writing. And I was like, okay, you just be quiet. I just need somebody else yeah like near me while I'm doing this because I knew that I was going to justify every single reason like my brain was going to start spinning its wheels every single reason not to do it and then I would start writing someone's name and be like they deserve that yeah like I didn't do anything you know like my head just telling me and then I know as I went on and ever I was looking at my part like you really start to get the hang of it like all of your character defects are just the same for every mm. single person. Like there's a couple outliers like here and there, but you're like, all right, I get it. Pretty consistent. <laughs> Enough. Yeah. Pretty consistent facts on my, it was like, oh, there that is again. Yeah. As we're sitting here talking and, and the, the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous uses this analogy of, of a business doing an inventory any business that doesn't okay. regularly like look at the books and all of that is sure to fail and yeah. so mm -hmm. i'm sitting here thinking of that analogy and i saw a commercial i think it was last night for that show like bar rescue where the guy comes in and helps the struggling bar owner like get his business back going uh, that's a fourth step yeah this guy is coming into this 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 man's business looking at the books, looking at how they're doing things, seeing what's working and what's not working and essentially helping this guy. And I felt that the show Bar Rescue was somewhat fitting, but uh, yeah. <laughs> there are other shows of that nature that aren't bar related, but it's, I'm like, that guy, he's doing a fourth step. Yeah, there's a great, yeah. there's a great YouTube, uh, 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 Ted, TEDx talk, TEDx Nashville, actually, if somebody wants to look for it, there's a, recovering guy who's also a consult leadership consultant that said the the rules are the same for a business that they are for an addict <laughs> yeah we do the same thing um yeah be aware of all of the bad shit that you're doing and that's going on and look at the good stuff and try and do more of this and be aware of this like you're probably still going to do it anyways yeah. but at least be aware of it and know what to do with all of that defect so it doesn't turn into and the and one I'm thing I just anybody that's listening, uh, you know, there's misnomers about twelve step recovery and that it's some harsh. We're going to force you to look at your character defects. You're selfish. You're self centered. You're angry, and you're you know, it's not like that. I've never had that experience. It's like, come on, brother, let's uh, let's get some freedom together. Uh, some of the language. Uh, when, when when it's taken out of context it seems harsh and it's the it's the most loving circle of people i have ever been in this is my family of choice uh these days and the, the thing i really want to leave folks with is we don't want to do any of this without support most of us uh were loners you know occasionally we do drugs with people because it somehow worked there was things we could get out of that but that was the only time but most of the other time we're just trying to get out of my fucking way. I'm, you know, so, and it's not natural for many of us to ask for support and to say, I need help. At the Braveheart experience that we do out at the last resort, we actually have the guys chant that about 10 times throughout the weekend. I need help just to practice. Most guys have never said it. Yeah. I don't know about women, but uh, you didn't say it much either. Did you Camille? No, I'm very resistant to that. I'm like, I'm, I've got this. I don't need your help. I still am like that. Someone's like, oh, here, let me help you with that. And I'm like, get away from me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, still, like, get back. Yeah. So that's what I hope people will, at the very, so the fourth step will work itself if I can just relax my muscles and my, my resistance, uh, willingness, and cur courage, you said, is the, the underlying juice here. Huh, Kyle? Yep. Yeah, the, the, the spiritual principle behind step four is courage. And oh, that, that makes so much sense here because what takes more courage, being tough and shut down or being vulnerable? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it takes a lot more courage to be open and vulnerable. So, mm -hmm. and that's what the fourth step is. That's the vulnerable step, the fourth and fifth. Well, that all is. <laughs> Eight and nine are kind of vulnerable too. 
Well, but, and it's not that scary being vulnerable. That's another thing I learned. So, you know, it, it, it wasn't anything that I thought it was going to be. Imagine yeah. that. Yeah. And it's, and you've, you've really shown that here, uh, Kyle, uh, really grateful for you bringing little pieces of your story and, uh, your experience, strength and hope. It's been cool. Uh, we'll get you on Thank here you. again. We'll get you on here again, for sure. Uh, Anytime, so think, just let me know. Okay, man. Uh, so I think we can transition unless anybody's got anything else to say on this, this, uh, wonderful topic of awareness. Uh, uh, so, uh, Kyle, why don't you let folks know how to get a hold of you and what you're up to in the world? Sure. Yeah. So, so, uh, as Bob mentioned earlier, business development rep for the Houston area of, of the last resort, but I view myself as uh, a resource broker, if you will, um, work for the last resort, wonderful treatment center. Uh, check out our website. If you have more questions, uh, www.lastresortrecovery.com. Uh, email Kyle R at lastresortrecovery.com. That's probably going to be the best way to reach me. Okay, great. And you can reach out to us and we will grab him if you want him. Uh, Camille, say a couple of things about what's happening at Deep Waters. Yes, a couple of things. Um, keep an eye out. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and you'll get to know more about our upcoming events, the experiential facilitators training, and then also the DWI or Deep Waters Intensive. Um, you can also go to our website, deepwatersrecovery.com or email at admin at deepwatersrecovery. Um, yeah, follow us on all the social media and you'll see what's going on. All right. Thank you. Uh, so uh, anything else we need to do other than just be grateful? <laughs> grateful recovering people? <laughs> All right. So uh, Camille, thanks. Uh, oh, wait a minute. I want to ask you just a quick, we're going to do one quick dive question. You ready? Okay. What is spirituality to you, Kyle? Ooh, um, getting out of myself. Thank you, Camille. Connection. And I will say true emotion mm. Mm. Uh, and uh, most grateful for, Kyle. What are you most Ooh. grateful for? A second chance at life. <laughs> Thank you. Camille? My awareness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm grateful that I got out of my way enough to be to enjoy being a dad is mm. such a beautiful ride for me. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And uh, so I hope the folks listening ask, answer those questions for themselves, especially the gratitude question. Gratitude, I think we could forget about the 12 steps and all this trauma work and just choose to do grateful, do a gratitude list all day long and may, you might get the same. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe not. I don't know. Get back to me on that. All right, you guys, Kyle, you're a blast. Camille, I always appreciate you and everybody listening. Thanks for being here. Uh, you're in the deep waters now.